There is growing anxiety in Russia about the movement of Ukrainian troops on the Moscow-controlled left bank of the Dnieper. The assessment by the Institute for the Study of War ISW has highlighted Russian concerns about the ability of Kiev forces to cross the river in Kherson Oblast and the inability of Moscow troops to stop them. Since June 2023, Ukrainian forces redeployed troops near the Ananovsky Bridge, according to British defense officials who said Russia may have relocated troops from the Dnieper grouping of forces DGF Southern Military District to reinforce the Saporizhia sector. On July 1, Russian officials boasted that their troops had driven back Ukrainian troops near the Ananovsky Bridge after making a surprise landing. ISW said Sunday that one of the reasons Russian officials were touting the small victory was because they feared a Ukrainian attack on the east bank of the Dnieper. Today, the Ukrainian defense forces continued their offensive in the Bakhmut, Melitopol, and Burdian areas. This was stated by the spokesman for the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Enrik Kovalev. According to him, Ukrainian troops continued to carry out offensive operations in the Bakhmut direction. In particular, to the north and south of the town of Bakhmut, they continued to suppress the enemy, knocking them off previously captured lines. The defense forces have had some success in the Klitschik area, where they are entrenched on the border's reach. In the Berdyansk direction, the greatest advance of the armed forces into the depths of the enemy to two kilometers was recorded. Over the past day, in this direction the enemy lost 72 soldiers, 166 were wounded, and 36 enemy weapons and equipment were destroyed. In particular, five tanks, nine armored fighting vehicles, one enemy control post, and two enemy ammunition depots were also destroyed. At noon, the Ukrainian armed forces shared footage showing a Russian soldier flying in the air after a tank exploded and shattered. The short video shows several tanks moving through a meadow before an explosion engulfs one of the vehicles in black smoke. At the same time, a figure that looked like a soldier was seen circling into the sky before landing roughly 100 feet 30 meters from the tank. On Wednesday, the Ukrainian armed forces shared dramatic footage showing a massive fireball erupting across Ukraine as a Russian ammunition depot was destroyed in a horrific explosion. Video of the destruction of the depot comes after Kiev said its counteroffensive against Vladimir Putin's troops had been successful in recent days and another clip from the front emerged showing brutal trench fighting. Footage from near the city is regularly shared on social media platforms showing Ukrainian tanks clearing Russian positions and Kiev troops fighting their way through trenches in a battle reminiscent of the First and Second World Wars. In one clip filmed by drone, two tanks can be seen firing shells into trees, targeting Russian defensive positions. In another video, Filmed with the Ukrainian soldiers' helmet-mounted camera, troops are seen advancing through the Russian trenches and taking prisoners. The graphic clip shows the bodies of a number of Russian soldiers strewn on the ground. Reuters news agency said it was unable to verify the situation on the battlefield. Each side said the other suffered heavy losses. The frontline combat report from Russia's defense ministry said its troops had thwarted Ukrainian attacks on five areas of the eastern Donetsk region. It also reported repelling attacks near Lyman and disrupting enemy operations in the Saporizhia region, where Ukraine said its forces had captured a group of villages. The general staff of the Ukrainian military reported success in repelling Russian attacks on Kapiansk in the north, Bakhmut and near the contested cities of Bogdivka and Mariinka in the south. As Ukraine continues to move forward, concerns have turned once again to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which has long been the subject of mutual accusations and suspicions between Ukraine and Russia. Meanwhile, Russian media said the Ukrainian armed forces counterattack towards Zorkovrobotino ultimately failed. The situation on the front in the Orkavrobotino direction remained tense, although there were no large-scale hostilities. As is known from the combat reports, 
the Ukrainian armed force is regularly tried to strike in small groups on this sector of the front. In particular, yesterday, in the residential area of Nestoryanka, an attempted surprise attack by the enemy was noticed. Thanks to the vigilance of the Russian troops, this advance was noted in a timely manner and was repulsed. The enemy was no less active along the Novo Denilov Karabadino Highway. In this area, units of the Ukrainian armed forces tried to seize and hold forest plantations, but their attempts were also detected and neutralized by Russian troops. However, in the context of these events, one important point should be noted. The massive attack on a forest plantation was recorded using a Grot multiple launch rocket system. This may indicate that Ukrainian forces are planning to establish a foothold in the area for future attacks. Russian media also said, currently, PMC Wagner is preparing for a major offensive against the armed forces of Ukraine. PMC Wagner attacks on Ukraine may begin in the next one to two months. Against the backdrop of the movement of large Wagner PMC troops to neighboring Belarus and the announced return of fighters from private military companies to the front by Prigozhin, there is information that at this time the Wagner PMC may be preparing a fateful decision. In his last statement, the head of the private military company Wagner said that in the near future, PMC fighters will again be recognized at the front. Prigogine did not provide details, but previously the head of a private military company stated that PMC Wagner was expected to return to the front in August this year. According to a number of assumptions, the offensive of PMC Wagner from Belarus, even in the most unfavorable scenario, would allow the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops of up to 100,000 people from the front. This was enough for the Russian army to be able to launch a counteroffensive and take possession of the LPR and DPR territories.